I have no qualms in saying that The Testaments by Margaret Atwood was one of the more profound reading experiences that I have had in a long time. It follows on from The Handmaid's Tale, published all the way back in 1985, but you don't need to have read that to appreciate this book. If you didn't know, it is a dystopian novel based in Gilead, a theocratic, patriarchal America where women are brutally repressed and the law is a twisted version of the Old Testament. You could say that this is a book about escaping that dystopia, or bringing it down, but that's not what it's really about. The Testaments is an interrogation of faith and institutional religion, how it affects how we view ourselves and others and the world around us, even in ways that we might not realize, and how hard it is to deconstruct beliefs that we have incorporated into who we are, both harmful ones and harmless ones, and what that can feel like for someone. That emotional experience is just utterly engrossing, and when I read this one line, it was just so raw and real for me, and I want to read it to you too. I feared I might lose my faith. If you've never had a faith, you will not understand what that means. You feel as if your best friend is dying, that everything that defined you is being burned away that you'll be left all alone. You feel exiled, as if you are lost in a dark wood. It was like the feeling I'd had when Tabitha died. The world was emptying itself of meaning. Everything was hollow. Everything was withering. I really felt that. I don't talk a lot about my personal life, you know, on the channel or, or on here, but um, you know, I was raised in a Christian home, and I went to church for 25 years of my life. And I am 25, by the way. As in, I only just stopped going, really. When I've been asked, you know, oh, why did you stop? Why'd you cut it off now? I don't really have a clear answer. You know, for either them, or for myself. And that's the uncomfortable, disconcerting thing. You know, it's it's easy for me to say, oh, my friends have mostly left, my friends have moved on, you know, I don't have a huge number of social ties to that community anymore. But at the same time, I've been on a long journey of questioning why I believe what I believe. And faith is complicated because it's part of who I am and who I've always been, but suddenly it's a whole lot more nebulous and a lot less concrete. The Testaments was a really personal read for me because there's this character who is realizing they don't really believe these things anymore, trying to rationalize them, reshape them, refit them, put them back in the box and realizing they can't maybe letting go trying to figure out who I am without that. It was really confronting because when people ask, hey, what do you believe now? I don't really have an answer. Like I'm knowing myself less and less. And some things you're gonna turn on dramatically and suddenly, you know, I don't believe that anymore. And other things you just sort of drift with on the surface of it all, but not really immersed in it anymore. And those things are almost harder to let go of. There's this temptation when writing religious disillusionment arcs to have the character dramatically turn on everything they believed, scorning it behind them. There's this inbuilt cynicism that likes to divide religion into the easy, good, and bad. The Testaments is a disillusionment story, but there's also this intense sympathy for that struggle to let go in every line. There's this empathy for how faith can be a part of who you are on a really fundamental level, while also understanding that it can be weaponized against you, almost without you realizing in many ways. But what made this really profound for me is that in normal disillusionment arcs, you'll usually see the institution itself revealed to be corrupt or evil, or at least represented by evil characters. And there definitely are evil characters in Gilead behind it all. 
But that would really put a lot of effort to communicate how these systems that are around us can be passively harmful. What I mean by that is that these systems and cycles survive because it's easy to fight malicious, conscious, obvious evil where we can point a finger and say it's his fault, get him! But it's hard to fight evil that is passively accepted as normal where there's not a single person behind it, where we can't point a finger and say, hey, it's your fault, and then the evil goes away. Because it isn't orchestrated by any bad person, it's reinforced by our biases, by the justifications that we make inwardly to ourselves before we make them to others. There is a very real hierarchy in Gilead, but The Handmaid's Tale and The Testaments are about the power of these community norms, about how they can reframe things to make them seem more okay, and that that itself is a lot harder to fix. On a technical level, the writing is just brilliant. It's beautiful, it's poetic, uh, the opening immediately drags you into the world, story, and perspective, with Aunt Lydia comparing how a statue depicts her with how she views herself, which really fits into the way the story is told. It is told, by the way, from the perspective of someone who orchestrates the horrors of this Gilead society. She is not a good guy, but it really does make her perspective compelling. It pulled me through from line to line. The story is also split into two other perspectives, two girls that Aunt Lydia is training, and a lot of stories really struggle with split perspectives because one character is more clearly driving the plot, or one character has a more interesting commentary on the world. Uh, and that is slightly the case, Aunt Lydia is more interesting than these two girls, but it was never enough of a problem because all three perspectives are interesting, immersive, and compelling with their own arcs and ways of looking at the world. None of them felt like filler and Edward masterfully wove all three perspectives together. There is this whole subplot about how Lydia ended up in this position of power, that she was once a judge in modern America before it fell and she found a new place in the society. We learn about what she had to do to survive, what she chose to do, and what kind of person she is, uh, how she was conditioned to do evil, and how she justified it to herself. And that is a really interesting commentary to make. It's a very psychological story. And it's very skillfully juxtaposed with this girl who is unlearning all of these harmful things that she was taught and conditioned to believe. It's these two stories of opposite intensity dealing with the same thing, and this juxtaposition just really works. It is largely written in first person, and um, it's a great study on how to do that in a more adult context. We see a lot of first person in YA, and this takes that familiar style that you might like and brings it into a more mature level. On a metatextual level, it's a fascinating look at how to incorporate different styles of writing because there are witness transcripts, diary entries, uh, lectures, and seeing how they can feed into one another and seeing how uh, you can write them in a compelling way because sometimes it feels limiting to kind of like force yourself into a into a format like that. Um, but Atwood really does manage to do it. She really does manage to use those different mediums. Gilead is a very dark and grim world. The Testaments will rarely make you smile, but it is incredibly real and believable. A lot of the time we see dystopian societies and you get left with this feeling of, oh, how did this happen? How did this government ever manage to take power in the first place? But this story was so emotionally real for me that you can look at the people in this story and go, oh, I understand how these people let this happen, how these people got behind this uh, and let the society come to be. You see yourself in their weaknesses. I also want to say, don't let how you might not have enjoyed The Handmaid's Tale put you off from reading the Testaments. Little secret, I didn't like it either, but I loved this. It's a lot more digestible, it's faster paced, uh, Lydia is a lot more of a personality than Offred is, and there's a lot more tension, plot, while still being poetic and deep. No, it's not a flashy story, like a lot of dystopias out there, but if you go into it with that in mind, 
I think that The Testaments is a great way to expand your reading tastes beyond what you might normally read. What can I say but that I am in awe of Atwood's writing, especially with the nuance that she deals with the topics she discusses. I cannot recommend The Testaments enough. If you want to know what I'm reading or how I rate other books, then come follow me on Goodreads. I just got one. It's a lot of fun. It's all very new to me. Links down below.